uh, what a, what, to give you a great big thank you as well. And I have a son who is a Navy SEAL, and I want to thank you for your service there too, Chris. And uh, also, uh, I would like to just see what what uh, what I, I know you said that the, that the, uh, the 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 craft, the Dragon, handled uh, very well. But I want to see how how it compares uh, with uh, with the space shuttle. If one of you would address that, I would appreciate it. Well, thank you, sir. It certainly has been a, a long endeavor for, for us and our, our nameship, uh, namesake spacecraft. We're uh, proud to have her on board the International Space Station after all that the teams around the country and across America have done to, to get us here today. Uh, as far as a comparison with the uh, space shuttle, uh, both Doug and I took a few minutes uh, while we were accomplishing the approach and docking to, in our spare time, talk a little bit about it. We were surprised a little bit at uh, how smooth things were off the pad. The space shuttle is a, a pretty rough ride uh, heading into orbit with the solid rocket boosters. And our expectation was, as we continued with the flight into second stage, that things would uh, basically get a lot smoother than the space shuttle did. But uh, uh, Dragon was a uh, huffing and puffing all the way into orbit and uh, we were definitely driving or riding a dragon all the way up and so uh, it was not quite the same ride the smooth ride as the space shuttle was uh, up to Miko a little bit less G's but a, a little bit more uh, alive is probably the best way I would describe it anything else Doug no sounds good Bob what is Miko Sorry, I have to apologize for uh, actually using the term uh, Miko. It's a little bit confusing between the space shuttle and the Dragon vehicle. So it's a uh, main engine cutoff is uh, what Miko stands for. Those happened at different times in flight for the uh, two vehicles. For the space shuttle, that was when you were all the way in orbit. For Dragon, that was just uh, a little bit after two minutes. And then we had the single engine cutoff for second stage uh, when we achieved orbit. So that time, under the single engine, under Dragon, uh, with one engine, was uh, more of an experience than the the shuttle was uh, for that six and a half minutes or so that we were under that uh, under that second stage motor. Well, I would just like to say, uh, in, in fact, Doug, did you have something you wanted to add there? I, I met your mother and father uh, yesterday, Doug, and uh, great uh, great folks. They're very very proud of their son. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Uh, hopefully, they en enjoyed the uh, launch. I know uh, for parents, uh, it can probably be pretty nerve-wracking for them to experience uh, a launch. This was their uh, third, so uh, I'm glad uh, everything went okay, and hopefully, it was a good show. We haven't uh, obviously heard or seen any video yet, but uh, we're looking forward to seeing uh, seeing the launch replayed sometime. I can assure you that it was a great show. Uh, it was one of the one of the uh, treats of uh, of my lifetime. I would have to say, and many many other folks that were sitting there looking all across the the country, uh, and and e even the world. And I can tell you, as, as Senator Cruz said, we've gone through some really really rough times over the last few days, and to have uh, that successful launch, uh, you know, the the public private partnership between NASA and SpaceX, and you guys being so well-trained uh, and having it go off without a hitch was a tremendous blessing for our country. And uh, I can't tell you how many uh, emails and communications I've gotten from people that uh, were, who were so uh, disturbed by what was, what's been going on transpiring around the country to have uh, the great news uh, and the wonderful uh, liftoff and everything going without a hitch. So I just want to say God bless both of you. Thank you so very much. Bless the rest of you folks up there as well. We thank our Russian partners. And uh, thank you, Chris. Uh, uh, Y'all are all in our prayers, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, uh, seeing you, you, you successfully complete your mission and uh, back on, safely on Earth. God bless. Thank you very much. 
Yeah, and just so you guys are aware, uh, the show was, in fact, spectacular. Um, the ratings on NASA TV beat everyone else. Not just some of them, it beat all of them, and that includes... <laughs> yeah. Just, just so everybody is aware, the whole world saw this. Um, it trended number one on Twitter. It, it was uh, the, the, the number one thing talked about on social media in general. Um, this, was, this was an amazing moment. Um, and it represents a transition in how we do space flight from the United States of America. NASA is not going to purchase, own, and operate rockets and capsules the way we used to. We're going to partner with commercial industry for access to low Earth orbit, um, and those partnerships are going to enable our providers to get customers that are not NASA and drive down our costs, and we're going to have numerous providers that are competing on cost and innovation and safety, and we're going to have more access to low Earth orbit than ever before, and this business model, now that it's been proven on, on uh, commercial resupply of the International Space Station, now commercial crew to the International Space Station, this model is going to apply, and I know Senator Cruz has this near and dear to him, when we go to the moon. And, of course, when we go to the moon, it's going to be done um, because of the great people here at the Johnson Space Center and so many other centers across the United States of America. But when we go to the moon, we're going to land on the surface of the moon with commercial landers. Um, and, of course, we're very proud of uh, the Commercial Lunar Payload Services Program being managed right here out of the Johnson Space Center as well so that we can take small payloads to the surface of the moon. And all of this is leading up to an amazing day uh, where we have humans living and working for long periods of time on the surface of the moon, but doing it with a purpose. And that purpose, of course, is to go to Mars. Um, humanity is going to explore more and be able to go further than ever before because of the public-private partnerships. Um, we all know <laughs> that if the government is creating the demand, and the government is creating the supply, we will always be limited. But when we have partners that are interested in exploring commercially and, and doing the things that are necessary um, you know, to, to get capital investment, um, then we're all going to end up better. So I want to just say the whole world saw this. This is a new era in human space flight, and we are so grateful for the service of not just our two astronauts that embarked on this mission, but the 100,000-plus people that participate in, it, uh, in this mission. Uh, everything from the suppliers to the main contractors um, to the NASA team, the SpaceX team. Uh, what an amazing day um, for, for our country and, in fact, for the world. I'm going to turn it over for a second uh, to my deputy, Jim Moorhart, um, who's been a great deputy at NASA. Gentlemen, congratulations. You know, Jim's mentioned going to the moon. And yesterday and today, one, you've inspired the Artemis generation, which is our next generation. And that's what this is about. It's really bringing the children that we've got and our grandchildren forward so they'll be the ones that are going into deep space. This is the dawn of a new era, and we just thank you for being at the beginning of it. Thank you so much. Uh, it was absolutely our pleasure, uh, but it's just a huge team effort across the board from SpaceX to NASA that uh, made this all happen. We were just the lucky guys that got to fly the rocket uh, yesterday. I have a, a question for Chris Cassidy. Um, you know, our, our crew here uh, decided to, to, to be about three days late. Um, 